Ah, uh, what's up? Hey, Swain. Hey, birds. What's up? You ready? Uh, ready to knock this thing out? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do this. Been a long day, but uh, yeah. Uh, where's Bones? Um, I don't know. Oh wait, I mean, it's, did he post something in? Uh, uh, oh yeah, the Discord. He's not gonna be here. Oh, he's he's coughing and he's sneezing. <sighs> All right, well, yeah, this is sure. the perfect time to debut our hour-long roast of bones. <laughs> Isn't that a, is, don't you guys serve that at your restaurant? Uh, something like that. A delicious roast of bone. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this has been a long time coming. Um, listeners of the show might know that we have deep-seated resentments against bones that have been building up over two years. And uh, this is the night when we finally, yeah, we let it, we let it all out. Some might say the airing of grievances. <laughs> yep. The airing of bones related grievances. Also, uh, it's normally bones' job to say, no, let's not do an intro bit. We're on hiatus. Guess what, buddy? You're not here. <laughs> Mediocre intro bit. Here we go. Roast of Bones brought to you by Casper Mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> it begins now. <laughs> hate about bones what do you hate about bones his smile hey you know what i hate about bones what? he's always got chapstick on him why does he always have it on him so prepared it's not even like can't even do that dry. is it that dry in california i guess it is you guys are pretty it's dry. actually it's it's really dry <laughs> every uh every every time we do laundry it, like Mrs. Birds and I and the cats are all walking around the house, just like all of our fur sticking straight out from the static. It's, it's bad. <laughs> the hair is just electric in the wrong way. Yep. I use, uh, I use a, a pomade and a clay to try and keep it in, but the cats, they don't want that. They're cats. <laughs> the clay they don't believe in it. It's also not tasty. No, no. They, they don't like product, so go figure. They're lost looking like scrubs. Yeah. Nah, I mean they do okay. They're uh they're they're just naked all the time, so it's fine. <laughs> well uh, living the dream. <laughs> Since Bones wasn't here, we figured we'd do a uh, intro bit. There's the bit. Uh-huh. So yep. right now we're gonna transition into the episode. With a nice high quality retired joke. Well, well, oh, well, 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 well. Welcome to Crucible Radio. <laughs> I'm your host, Birds. I'm your host, Swain. And Bones isn't here. You, you know, people people tell me, and this is crazy to me, but people tell me that they can't tell me and Bones apart. That's crazy. I get. You're I, not gonna. You have, know what? Honestly, I get it from if you're first oh. thrist listening. But after a while, you should know. You should right? know. <laughs> you should know. I'm the one that sounds like this, and Bones is the one that sounds like. Yeah. Well, this week he just sounds like. Yeah, that, that sounds just like him this week. Yep, yep. <laughs> Spot on I guess, impression. I guess we're kind of like preparing the uh, listeners for the upcoming episodes we have where we're going to go from, we went from three last week, two this week, and one next week. Yep. So just like count down, <laughs> then we'll steadily come back up when uh, the three episodes are done and go two and then three. So just prepping you. <sighs> yep. We, uh... Actually, this is like mine's the gonna have two. It's gonna be me and sports psychologist Steve. I was actually planning on having a number of like short format interviews in mind because it's you know it's nice to be able to, like you're talking to someone else, you have the back and forth. That's nice. Yeah. It's nice to have. Yeah. So we got we got plenty of destiny to talk about, and like we should probably talk about the destiny that we're probably not going to talk about in our in our solo bolos. But uh, but before we get to that, Swain. Swain, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's been a very long week. Uh, yeah. I have a puppy, and he makes it so I never really sleep. Or I used to nap a lot. Let's say that. I used to nap a lot because... You are a celebrated napper. I, yeah, I would like sleep not so much from playing video games at night. Then I'd come home after work, midday, during the week, and take a nap or, you know, before the podcast or here and there, but no, 
the puppy requires 100% attention all the time. Even when what he's is- sleeping, you have to be like looking at him so like he doesn't get up and like go chew something. So it's like, oh. I'm very tired, but I'm here. It works busy, so I was busy with that too. But, mm-hmm. you know, got a lot of uh, Crimson Days. I even did the raid this week, so it's been a good Oh, one. yeah? I've been doing a lot, honestly. But uh, how about you? How are you, Bertz? Uh, I'm, I'm doing good. I've I've also had a... I've had a busy week, like the kind of week where like you finish work and then you, but you kind of don't finish it and you're still just sort of working and then you, you go to sleep and then you wake up and it's right back to work. And it's like, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not really felt like uh, it just, yeah, felt like one very long day, but I will, uh, I will say um, we had, uh, we had some friends over some, an, another couple, a couple's friends Ooh. over on, uh, on Valentine's. Cause like fucking go to a restaurant and uh, I cooked and I prepared a special Swain recipe that you told me, and holy shit, you weren't joking around. What recipe? Uh, well, here's what I did. I uh, I was at the supermarket, and they had these like bundles of colorful carrots with the stems still on. Uh. Like they got like the purple one, and then like yeah, the yeah. white one, and your orange one. Um, and I read, uh, I read, I think it was in Cook's Illustrated or something, that if you get the carrot with the stems still on, that's like gives you like a more flavorful, like carroty carrot versus just like the bags. Sure. Um, so I had like these good carrots. I peeled them. I cut them into bias. So they're all just like little chunks. And then I put them in a real hot pan Ooh. with uh, I'm ba- ba- basically dry. And, uh, <laughs> And they got like all like uh, seared and darkened and a little bit crispy, nice and soft on the inside, but still had some bite to them. I took them out of the pan. I put them in a bowl. I put some cold butter in there. Ooh. And then I put some finely chopped up chives and I stirred it up. And uh, ho- holy shit, those carrots are magic. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that that is the trick to make. It. That's like restaurant. That's such a restaurant trick right there. Like, yeah, you mount butter on everything like cold yep. butter and you take it off the heat just whatever you're cooking vegetables uh grains we do we go do it a lot with like uh we what do we have uh wheat berries on our one uh on our one dish it's wheat berries carrots and uh oyster smoked oyster mushrooms so uh-huh. we like last minute just Sounds like really fold good. a bunch of cold butter into it and it's amazing it's amazing. And, and like, that's what, that's what I've been learning. Like I, <laughs> like I love to cook. I've cooked for a long time, but like I've been not to brag or anything, but I've been killing it recently. And you do the same thing all, with pasta. That's exactly it. I'm making a, like, I make pasta almost every night this week. Um, I'm making pasta and it's just like, I'm barely doing anything. Like I'm just <laughs> learning to get out of the way. Just like get, get a bunch of garlic Get some chili flakes, get your parsley chopped all fine, and then just like stay out of the way, man. Don't ruin <laughs> it. I I, I I I get I get antsy and I ruin it. And even though I am hungry and I don't feel like doing it, I've been I've been cleaning as I go. And Ooh. you are like, you are right. And it's like yeah, you know, I, I know you're right, but it's um <laughs> it, it's just been a real solid set of dinners. So thank you for that. Um I I like I like when my food tastes like restaurant food, and all it takes is a ton of uh, salt and fat. It's great. <laughs> it's, the, it's the trick. Yeah, it's a real secret. A real secret trick. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Let's talk a little destiny. Um, so I mean, we had we had a uh, we had doubles this week. Uh, we've got faction rally coming up next week. We should we should talk about those. And I really do want to talk about doubles as a game mode cuz I think it's interesting. Um and specifically oh, yeah. crimson doubles. But but maybe just like before we get into the nitty-gritty, um what uh yeah, just just hot takes. What's what's going on in Destiny? What what are you up to? So, uh this week I finally had an like really I was really busy all week, but I got a lot of gaming in this this week and Destiny just felt really good, like from Crimson Days to uh, I did the raid layer for the first time. That was awesome. Uh, And I also started my Warlock on PC, which is like I've been putting off doing the Warlock and the Hunter for a while. That's mostly why I've been like, hey, yeah, no, no, I've just been using my Titan. Uh (laughs) But like (laughs) when you've done the story three times already on PS4 or four times at that point. The yeah. last thing was just like going through it again oh, with such like a, such a two slog. more. Like I, I'm going to do the hunter probably not 
too far after the warlock just to like be done like get it done and have uh-huh. it done but man whew, it is taking a while but i'm excited because i've missed playing warlock and i've like had to, i've listened to bones talk about it a lot and like towards the transition over to pc back in october i actually was playing a lot of warlock uh, yeah. To the point where, like, me and Bones were thinking about switching it up for montages where I would do the Warlock one and, like, <laughs> he would do a Titan one. So yep. <laughs> it's uh, it's exciting. I'm going to do my Warlock, uh, get my Warlock all kitted out, and hopefully finished next week because I ain't got much to do. Goals. Oh, and yeah, the, man. the wife's going out of town, so I'm going to plan. Oh, out. perfect. <laughs> yeah, nothing like... Nothing like just regressing to full bachelorhood for, for a couple <laughs> Look at of days. Yeah, like I'm living in my basement. I took off actually. <laughs> I would have live in my basement, <laughs> yep. and there's gonna be pizza boxes everywhere. And, sure, uh, I'll be take out e- containers. I'll be eating Doritos with tweezers. Sure, like you do. I personally <laughs> use use chopsticks because I have a lot of chopsticks and uh, no giant chef tweezers. You don't mean like eyebrow tweezers. You mean no? These are like, like the uh, offset, like. By a company called JB Prince, and they make kitchen tweezers. That's how you pick them. It's how it's how you be intentional with your plating is by having tweezers, so you can pick what you want out of it and put it where you want it. Well, you know what's killing me right now is I'm trying to do that like pasta plating thing Mm -hmm. where they get it all like swirled into a bundle and then just like put the bundle on the plate. And I was watching uh, Babish do it, and he's got. He's got like a, like a barbecue fork, like one of those giant two pronged forks. And I was thinking that's a good tool. I'm trying to do it with tongs, and it's just it's, it's not, actually that's it's actually not a pasta fork. It's, it's a like, pot. They have a fork just for getting the pasta out of the pan and onto the plate nicely. A good uh, Italian place will have that specific in it, a fork. You can probably get it from uh, Amazon as well. If you want to, if you want to have <sighs> add to your kitchen. I don't. I don't. I. I don't want any more kitchen things. I want to throw Why out. Not? The guy, man, I got. I got all the stuff I need. I don't need any more stuff. Tools are fun. Anyway, are. back to <laughs> test. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just gonna end up being a, a food episode. We're just gonna talk about food between all the destiny. Yeah. Well, okay. So because you're on your warlock, um, I've I've been digging my warlock uh, quite a bit recently, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention. Uh, our very own, what is he like? Our like our step kid or something? Um, <laughs> our intern, our uh, our like cool friend we buy beer for uh, uh, <laughs> the one and only <laughs> Anklet. Um, Anklet posted a very good uh, internet post on the internet. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, check it out. It's, it's on the CR Twitter. You can find it all there. But uh, Anklet posted a guide on sword surfing. Um, and, you know, it, it, some, you know, the same thing existed in D1, um, and people have used it. But um, I think he kind of correctly identified that a lot of people don't know um, just how fast sword surfing is um, to the point where you're faster than uh, everyone. Faster than yeah, basically it's it's very very fast. You you just yeah go go look at the CR Twitter, look at the replies. There's gifts of it, but the basic idea is you're on your warlock. You've got a a glide, so no blink, but some kind of glide, and you jump and then you do a, like an R one swipe, just your regular sword attack with with sword ammo. It does use sword ammo, and it shoots you forward. And then during the swipe animation, you tap jump to start your glide. And you continue coasting at that speed. And then the moment you land, you do it again. And what happens is for like about four sword ammo, like four swipes, you're across the map. And he included a bunch of gifts of him um, just using it like, like kind of like you'd use blink just to like quickly get around behind their lines um, and into close range. We're escaping territory. Like, uh, yeah. Engagement. So that's probably the biggest thing in Destiny uh, too is escaping your engagement with uh, as fast as you can. Sometimes, like, you find yourself, like, running away and you get, you know, tagged by two other people on the other side. But uh, this helps. This helps a lot when you can move faster than everyone. And uh, I I saw some people be like, yeah, that's great and all, but, like, I don't want to waste heavy ammo. 
But like you get so much sword ammo that uh-huh. like you think of it as like possible kills. If you use half of it on movement and the other half on kills, you still get four kills. So it's more than no. a, a rocket launcher get like nets you and you know, in the right situation, like it oh, would exactly. be right about the same as every other heavy or power ammo. Well, and it's 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 situation dependent, right? Like if you're just playing clash, like okay, yeah, you could hold on to it, right? There's plenty of people, everyone's just responding, you're gonna catch people out. Um, but if you're in a trials match and um there's you know, two people left on the other team and you've got nine sword ammo, uh you probably go ahead and use it. You're only gonna need you're only gonna need two to get the kill. Yeah. Um or or you pick up a second power ammo and you are just the king of sword ammo. I like it a lot because it encourages you to play it safe in some way and not just like running away, but like you want to conserve that ammo, like to use it once you move around. So like it encourages some intentionality with your uh, everything, movement, with your approach, with your... Uh, radar, all that. Like you got to be more intentional, and it like leads to like higher KDs and you know all that stuff. That's you know a measure of you not getting in bad situations. It's the opposite of just rushing in. Yeah, I uh, I gave it a shot. Um, I am using my. I think it might be my favorite sword, Trader's Fate. Uh, this is one of the uh, the Assassin's Blade ones. So if you get a kill, it boosts your movement speed. Um, and I've found in most situations, one sword surf is for sure worth it. Like when you're on either side side of a box and you can just swipe once across and finish it out on the glide, and then you've got, you know, pick up two or three kills because you're there and they can't they can't focus you down fast enough. Uh it's 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 pretty great. It's pretty great, and I like it. So um, yeah, and just like you know, Ankle, he he's an art guy. He made these pretty gifts with instructions and everything. Go check it out. I uh, I also have to uh, I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the whole Spotify thing we were talking about the other week, like you can you can have shared Spotify in your Discord chats and just post it, and everyone listens while one person DJs. Um, I found out about that actually. It was you, me, and uh, Otter playing together. <laughs> um, and uh, Otter put on some tunes, and we listen to uh, Otter's fantastic choice in music. Uh, so credit to Otter to discovering that. I uh, I stole credit. I had it for a week. I got all the good part of the credit, and uh, you can have the rest of it. So thank you. Thank you. Otter. <laughs> no, no. Otter, we love you. And um, if you call the Crucible Radio hotline, you may hear Otter reading the TWAP. Uh, details coming soon. Yeah, if you're lazy like me and want someone else to read you the TWAB, we may yeah. have that for you. <laughs> Don't read the TWAB in traffic, man. Focus on the road. All right. I uh, I got a new exotic this week. Um, I kind of forgotten about it. Like, Tell me more. Tell me more. Like, was it a car? Uh, no, it was a hand cannon. Ooh. Well. Which hand cannon? Kind of. Um, I got a, a crimson. That's the uh, the mercury one. Ooh. Um, and it's like, it's, it's the, uh, it's the red death one. So it, um, you get a kill with it and it recharges your health. Let me, let me make sure I'm, I'm reading this one, right? Uh, kills with this weapon heal the wielder precision kills also refill the magazine and it's all covered in blood and spikes and stuff. It's also a three round burst, um, like a, well, like a, like a sidearm and it kind of feels a lot like a sidearm in that sense. Hmm. But I got to be honest with you. I got it. I put it on, played some PVP with it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, a little tricky. Threw it away. Tr- <laughs> well, it's just like, it doesn't do a lot of damage and it's a three round burst. It's not like super, super tight spread. So it's not like you're landing all headshots. It's great for team shotting, sure. team sh- shooting. Um, I mean, you can say that like about a, every, every guy. Yeah, right. Like anything that can do damage is good for team shooting. Um, I was having a lot of trouble with it. Like it just, in the kind of engagements that, you know, like a 1v1 where you're within the range where it makes sense and you're landing your bursts and not hitting the drop off, 
uh, it just didn't feel as good as the other stuff. And like, maybe that's the idea, right? Like it takes a little bit longer, but if you survive, you're reloaded and healed back up. Um, so, I mean, this, this hand cannon, the way you're talking about it is like, yeah, it's not up to snuff right now, but this kind of pairs really well with, uh, the TWAB this week and how they kind of talked about their future exotic tuning pass. And, uh, it, I feel like this may be a, you know, potential target for some changes. I, I would think so. Also, uh, continued great work on not calling out when you're doing an artful segue. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I had to. I won't do it after this one. <laughs> Bert Boats did it last week and now I know. I'm get it this week. I know. I just, I, 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 I see the improvement. I, I had to hold you. myself back. <laughs> and also maybe ruin it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I've got it out of my system. Bones got his, I got mine. We're done. Um, sure. I'm sure that's not a new bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, Nuska had like an extensive write up in the TWAB about uh, exotic, exotic tuning pass. And this is the one that's set for, or they're shooting for the March 27th release. Stretch goal, so it might, might slip to the next one. But I don't know, I, I, it, was, it was interesting to hear him talk about it. And I noticed that like there's, there's a couple things that went into it because this is like a healthy post it's not a tweet right the thing thing with it is it's not like it was um we've been getting a lot of i feel like data lately like a very specific like here's what's coming here's what's being fixed i feel like that was like the focus of like a lot of the discussion lately is like sure specifics and and that's what people wanted like people were calling out for just tell us so it's like okay we we get that and this was more like a story it felt like a story and it was like more of like a, a conversation with the community about like, Hey, here's an insight into how we're thinking right now. Like there's you, I think a lot of people don't think about it, but there's like a, a reason and a concept behind all of these exotic weapons, like, and an armor. It's like, they have this like fantasy going behind them. Oh, if I mean, if you've ever listened to uh, one of our bungee interviews, uh, yes, they, they, they let the fantasy of these weapons and the art of them and the sound of them really sort of drive their creation and their setup. And sometimes it, it can be its own detriment. Like a uh, icebreaker was like, Oh yeah. The root, like it makes sense to have this weapon that recharges on its own. But then like you get into the, you know, the thick of it and all of a sudden that weapon is like either way too powerful or you're like this, I, why would I ever use this? Nope. And like, that's, the beauty of the changing sandbox though, like it's not like it's a delivered game, like way back in the, you know, late nineties where you're like, Oh, this is the game now. Like I'm not going to, mm-hmm. it's never going to change. So having a game it's that changes works, so then. often is like, is good for these things. Well, and like, I think, um, I mean, you know, this is not a terribly original idea, but kind of like seeing the way they set this up, there's a lot, like they left themselves a lot of room to turn the heat up on stuff. I mean, the, there's no icebreaker, right? There's no exotic with a perk that you can't really, ch- like, it's so simple. Like you get free ammo on the regular, you'll always have some. And you can't really change it to try and make it the not you know, the, the, not the most used weapon without just like gutting that exotic fantasy. And so a lot of the exotics that we've, we've got are, are pretty mild effects or they give you an effect that you could select for in your subclass. So, you know, you can play the other path or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so we talked about Graviton, um, and, uh, Describe the gameplay goals. So tuning pass on exotic gear focus on adding and or increasing player power spikes, which is good because I I just don't find myself using a lot of exotic weapons. I I, I, I find myself not even using them at all. Yeah. Uh, I, more well, there, more often than there's not. There's a couple. Yeah. I I mean, which ones do I use? I mean, I'll pull out Mida. I'll pull out Prometheus from time to time if I'm feeling like a tool. Uh, no, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing wrong uh, with Prometheus. That's great. Lots of fun. I will put on like Sunshot every now and then. Um, but there, I get, yeah, there's not really a lot of others that are a go-to. Um, I'll use Merciless, but um, 
Yeah, I guess a lot of my exotics show up in the power slot. Like, there's not a lot of exotic primaries that that are real strong choices for me. Um, so yeah, so good that we're getting that. Um, and then second gameplay goal: uh, focus on low usage items, but all items are being considered. Um, makes sense. And then finally, lean into an item's established gameplay and push it harder. Avoid catch-all improvements that dilute item identity. And then he spells it all out with Graviton Lance and how they have this fantasy that's not just like the mechanic of the perk or whatever, but how this gun works, like like in, in canon, how it works, right? Yeah. Like the first bullet opens up a hole in space-time for the last bullet to fall through. And then just talks about all the problems with how it works right now. Um, and I think sort of similar to the problems I'm having with Crimson, right? Like, yeah, it makes sense, and it all kind of works, except <coughs> doesn't actually work. That was a that was a sneeze of emphasis right there. <laughs> That's true. Really <laughs> yeah, making my point. And then, yeah, uh, and we sort of talked about this last week as well. I spent a lot of time going into what they're like, what they want to avoid. Um, they don't just want to like have it do more damage. They don't want to, yeah, just like tweak it in terms of making it kill faster. Like they want to make it more powerful, but based around the perk, which yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think like uh, it's not always the solution to make things more like the numbers go up essentially sometimes the solution might be in what they stated here like re recoil uh more aim assist like under the hood stuff uh and changing like the round like the amount of rounds from yep. three to two so uh, is it still a pulse rifle if there's only two bullets i guess yeah, yeah it's an exotic so it's it its own thing sure hey they got their own rules yeah. um well, so, I mean, let's, so, so they, they, they mentioned which ones they're not going to touch. Merciless, Telesto, Wardcliff, Mida, Colony, Legend of Acreus, and Vigilance Wing. It makes sense. Um, but that that leaves, leaves a whole a bunch lot. of exotics. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I had mentioned Crimson, um, and I would say probably for me, just because I find it, like, I think it's a cool gun and I like the fantasy of it. That's probably the weapon for me I'd like to see get a boost. What? What weapon would you want to see go up? Oh, man. Uh, this is a, a weird one that you don't hear a lot of people talk about, but I would honestly like to see Darcy more. Yeah. And Darcy is the one that, like, it moves really fast, and it gives you, like, information in the sights when you're using it. So, like, I would love to... The way I see a potential solution for, like, getting more exotics involved and like getting people to uh, rekindle their love of like certain uh, power weapons, like having that like really snappy, like I would love to see the Darcy just be like that, that sniper rifle that everyone uses. It's got like that beautiful sight and that would be so mm -hmm. cool to have everybody using that and like have it just be the, the one like, okay, that we're trying to push more, usage of sniper rifles so people will use this and like we're trying to promote people using you know fusion rifles so like this will find a, a buff or the tractor cannon's really cool like how do we make mm -hmm. that like more of a choice um and the key word here is like everything's been about buffs and improvements whereas like it always felt like destiny one was like we're taking away like we're making this like less mm -hmm. powerful and we're reacting to your like the criticisms by like toning it down. This has just been about like turn it up, turn everything up, put it all up, like we'll, we'll deal with it afterwards. So I th I would honestly like to see them get like a little crazy with it. Like all of these exotics, yeah. like put them put them all above everything else. Like if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We, we, you know, we revisit it on the other side, but like, I would love to see them take some chances and really push some of the uniqueness that the exotics bring. I, I mean, I don't necessarily know if I need them to be better, but I think a lot of the, a lot of the exotics are just like, I couldn't see myself using them over just a, a legendary version of the same gun. And also like, you don't see, you don't see, 
I think a lot of the most common weapon types as exotics, right? Like there's no 450 auto exotic weapon. Yeah. It, I mean, I don't know. Is there, I don't even think there's actually, I mean, there's trace rifles. I don't even know if there is, is an exotic auto rifle. Oh no. Okay. They, they, there's hard light. There's hard light. There's that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, and like turning it up can mean a lot of things like for Darcy, if they could just like reduce the zoom on the scope a little bit, that could yeah. do it. That might be enough. Um, and then you don't have to change the damage or anything. Like just mm-hmm. make it, make it quick, make it short, make it like crazy fun. And you'll have a lot more people visiting it and simply just mentioning you're changing something will definitely spike the usage of it. Oh yeah, Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I, I, I don't mean it in particular, but like the no land kind of thing where it's this is a hard gun to use unless you're good and then you can be very, very good with it. Like I don't think we have that exotic weapon right now. And uh, you know, the, to in general, though, like this approach um, of coming in low and turning things up. I like that. I like that a little bit more than like coming in hot and then like, you know, frantically adjusting the buttons. (laughs) Like, oh shit, turn it down. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's resulted in a lot of like, you know, people not enjoying them as much, but like, you know, for the long term, I like this. Yeah. Give me something new, but don't take something away. Yeah. Noose didn't really mention exotic armor in here i i mean looking at the roadmap they do say exotic weapon and armor changes so i have to assume there's some armor that's getting a boost um but same thing same thing if you could see one go up which one would it be and how would you want it to go up oh man i would love to see like continuing their discussion of turning things up uh making the whole place go faster <laughs> I would honestly, like, I think I've talked about it before, but I would love to see the lion rampant be like more usable. Like just something that's just like, I'm going to, you know, fly through the air and uh-huh. give it something like, like a unique, like twilight garrison where it's like, Oh my God, I would love like make it seem like the synthesis where the synthesis are like, man, that gives me a distinct advantage in this direction. Like I keep those on because I want to have that like little bump in advantage when it comes to punching. Um, sure. If you could make it so that like the lion rampant gave me a bump to escaping or movement, like maybe it has like its own, like the first jump you do is like faster than the next one for like every sure. like 15 seconds. Who knows? It's me sure. throwing something out there, but like, have it be that like I can get away really quickly Mm -hmm. or I can, I can go into a battle quickly. Yeah. I mean, lion rampant, right? Like all that does is it gives you more, more hang time, more air time on your, on your jump. But like in PVP, how, how often is that even relevant? Right? Like you're canceling a lot of jumps in PVP or you're just, you know, like I'm skating along on Titan. So it doesn't really matter if you're in the air or not. Um, yeah. Something, something with cornering or like a juke would be cool, but I understand they don't want another twilight garrison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like the synthesis give you is like the perfect example of like an exotic that's it's good. And it adds a specific style to your gameplay without being like, the be all end all solution. It do, not everyone is running that exotic. There's plenty of other ones that like, you could pick up and find, you know, decent utility, like the Crest of Alpha Loopy. Like I love that one. And every once in a while I'm like, you know, I, I miss having that heal. Like the shield goes up and I can heal myself real quick. Mm-hmm. And that's really useful in a lot of, like in a lot of situations in Destiny. So mm-hmm. uh, I like that approach and I hope that more exotics, uh, come that way what about you what do you what do you want more of Mm, i'm gonna pick a hunter exotic and i I don't think it's well yeah shocker um (laughs) i don't think it's bad uh you know it's it's i in its current state um it's just that there's a lot of decent hunter exotics 
you know, maybe not for every scenario, but like there's a lot that are really strong. Like Gemini Jester is pretty strong right now. Shinobu's is particularly yeah, strong right now. Especially for Days. That. Yep. Um, Knucklehead Radar, I've, I've gone on about at length. It is it is glorious. Um, you know, if you're on Night Stalker, Graviton Forfeit, you want to be Invisible Boy, that's great. Even like Faux Tracer. Like Faux Tracer, you know, one of its perks, like the damage boost, doesn't actually really do much in PvP. But even that is like a solid choice that people use. Um, and so the one I'd like to see come up, I don't need it to be crazy. I just want a little boost. Um, I want to see lucky pants come up. Lucky Mm. pants (laughs) are so cool. They look so cool and the fantasy feels strong, right? Like that's some Han Solo stuff. You got, you got, you got these like cool pants and you got your, your ammo belt and you're a cowboy. Um, (laughs) Having the um, having the what's it like moving target or whatever like the initial accuracy boost cool, the ready speed you know if you're running dual hand cannons cool. Um, the the thing I'd like to see have it happen here that would be enough for me to 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 say you know I'm gonna start using this over something else. Um, it needs just a little bit more and like maybe I'm wrong maybe people are getting a ton of mileage out of this but I don't necessarily want to run double hand cannons. And so for me, if they could just give a little boost to reload speed on that to like put it on par with the Fidian, then that I think would that would be enough to tip it over. Like and only only for hand cannons, right? Like just stay with the fantasy of it. Just just give me a you know so I don't have to run I don't have to run kinetic reload mods because you know, some of those hand cannons, that better devils, it takes a it takes a real long time to real reload. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I think that would be pretty nice. You know, one thing that's interesting, we were sort of talking about this. You brought this up before we started the show that I think is worth like calling out. Um, is that like part of having these games be like, you know, not Mario 64, not buy a cartridge and that's what the game is, but having these things be living, evolving things that last for, you know, years of updates. It's more of a um, world. It's a world. It is. It's a world and it, it includes real people because they're putting out um, you know, they're putting out news every week was sort of looking at the TWAB and like this, this new write up on the exotics. So yeah, I guess thinking about that, like, I mean, there, there's, I think two other games that come to mind that are sort of in the same ballpark as destiny. Um, and it's, it's, I think it'd be interesting to take a look at those. Of course, we've also got to talk about Crimson Days. We got to talk about doubles, right? Before we get there, you know, you know what time it is, listeners. It's time where we give a little shout out to our sponsor this week, Casper. Casper, Casper hooking it up, man. Casper makes one heck of a mattress. Oh man, I love my Casper mattress. It's I'm very excited right now to go to sleep after this. It's been a long day. And I very much look forward to sleeping on my Casper mattress. Oh, you earned it, buddy. Like, and I got like a fancy mattress before this with like, you know, whatever kind of pillow top, whatever. And I'd wake up feeling sore. Like it it wasn't comfortable. No more. No more on my Casper. So podcast listeners are invited to take advantage of Casper's competitive limited time President's Day offer for the first time ever. That's what... That's what you do on President's Day. Buy a Get mattress. yourself a mattress. Uh, Casper is the place to shop for your mattress and get those President's Day savings this year. And look, you're already saving because they sell directly to you. There's no showroom. They cut out all the added costs. There's no Amazon money. in the middle. Uh-uh. No Amazon. And look, they got three mattress lines to choose from. They got the original. They got the original Casper. <laughs> They've got, I'm struggling with that word right now. Uh, they've got the new innovative wave and then your streamlined essential. There's a better mattress for everyone. Yeah. And the best part is you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. I guarantee you, you're going to be upgrading when you go to a Casper. If you don't believe us, just try it. And if you don't like it or you're not sure, whatever, the returns are hassle free. You don't have to worry about filling out the paperwork and doing all that. They make it simple. If you're not completely satisfied, go ahead and return it. But you're not because you can sleep in the superior comfort for the rest of 2018 and beyond with the help of the internet's favorite mattress brand. 
So for a limited time, visit casper.com slash savings and receive up to $200 off your purchase of $2,000 or more. That is a lot of savings. You go to casper.com slash savings to get up to $200 off your purchase of $2,000 or more. This special offer expires February 20th, 2018. February 20th, 2018, better get on it, guys. Day one listeners, before you start that faction rally on Tuesday, go get you a mattress this President's Day. All you got to do is go to casper.com slash terms for more details. Casper! All right, where were we? Oh, we were talking about about the TWAB and the other games uh so yeah we like to kind of put into perspective uh the amount of like you know what we're seeing in games these days is an increased communication from the people making them especially like competitive games and these like really extensive world building games you're seeing a lot of communication from the developers and from people involved with making these games successful uh, and obviously it's it's at the player's demand. Like a lot of people want to know more. They want to know where your game is going and like what they have invested in it. So, well, and it's, it, everyone's got kind of a different approach. Like when the division first came out, like I, you know, I played it, played it for a good while. I had some fun, but you know, we did a division episode. People were <laughs> crazy about that. I did this, uh, and but you know, I, I kind of fell off. Like I, I wasn't feeling it. And Division had like a, a pretty big reboot. Um, they've they've really you know worked it over. They brought in a lot of players, um, and it's it's fairly popular right now. And it's interesting to go see sort of the Division's version of the TWAB because it's kind of the same, but it's really different. Like it is much more for starters. It's much more business like right like you don't get the i've come to appreciate that in the twab of like like you got hey, a good friend every week yeah. that shows up and talks about your favorite game with you yes it's deej it's cosmo it's dimji like these guys are into it you know cosmo's sneaking cat pictures <laughs> into the, <laughs> the twab everywhere he's slowly working through the bungee employee cat base um and talk about you know I, they have a lot of fun with it. And not that this is a bad thing, but the division is very, um, I think sort of the people, you know, it doesn't really have that same voice in a way. It, it's there. There's not a real strong identity and it's very kind of details based. It's, there's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of data. I see a lot of charts. It's been a long time since <laughs> I saw a chart from destiny or just like a graph of like, you know, since we made this change, here's the resulting change in the cause of player death plotted over two dimensions. Like <laughs> it, it's much more sort of based on the numbers. Um, and, you know, it's got the same parts. It just feels, it feels a little bit, a little bit different. Still, still kind of twabby though, in a sense, like same, same format still. Yeah. I feel like we get some data from Destiny as well. But a lot of it isn't really displayed. It's like, it's more so explained. Like, here's yep. what we're doing based off of the data we have um, in the background. There was one like a year ago or something where I think it was Hamrick or maybe Grant. Like, they were talking about subclass usage and were showing like just how out of whack sort of the subclass choice was in D1. And they posted a chart that just sort of laid it out in <laughs> the Destiny community or a certain chunk of it. Um, kind of kind of did not take it well. Like, like, oh, they didn't even control for this. They didn't even look to see, you know, if, if, if players are switching or, or, you know, whatever the details were. Um, and that was not my takeaway. It was like they showed us one chart of what I'm sure is like 30 or 40 charts that inform this sort of data-driven side of the decision-making. But I think ever since then, they've been very wary of kind of showing off those numbers to players. And I guess I get that because it does sort of break the immersion of the Destiny world in the way, in the same way that, you know, like they've they've talked about, like we don't have every single number posted on the card for every gun when you see it. You get a lot of them, but a lot of them are sort of worked into the overall gameplay of target acquisition instead of aim assist. And the Destiny community loves, like, not to say that they don't want this data, because I'm sh- I'm absolutely certain they do. Because do. you see people going into, like, Destiny Tracker or uh, 
you know, trials report and being like, here's the numbers from this for this weekend for this, that, and the other thing. It was probably like the biggest disgust thing at the end of Destiny 1 was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I can't believe that trials was only this weapon for sure. the whole weekend. And like, you oh, these see guys like, are LO farming. Look at their LO. Or like, yeah, like you see the dis like the difference between like what at the end of Destiny One was like this is the gun everyone's using, and it's so far and above like everything else. Or like these are the amount of people that are using scories. Do you remember scories? I do. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. So so short short minded. I, yeah, I got a real short mind. No, of course I remember Scories. Short sighted. <laughs> scories, scories has come back in a slightly different way. This is something that, like, I don't know, it, it frustrates me a little bit to see that people think uh, that we haven't been getting communication from uh, Bungie at all. Like, every once in a while, like, it dips, but, like, that's usually around, like, a content drop, like, a studio is understandably busy around that time. But it, like I had a time hop show up just the other day and it was like, I took a screenshot of a TWAB and it was literally Josh Hamrick talking about the changes upcoming to destiny one and like talking about scories changes and uh, specific exotics. They were tuning like apotheosis veil. Vale. And it was like, a perk on the warlock as well. There was a lot of like discussion and even like some Twitch. Remember the Twitch streams that were like showing off like the difference in how, you know, uh, it was like hand cannon bloom was around that time too. They were talking about like how intense it was and how it was changing. And even with like the score, changes as well. So I don't know. It's, you know, I very much come to appreciate their way of doing it, but uh, comparing it to one last other company. (laughs) And this is, this is probably to be honest, it's my favorite like discussion of their game. And that is Jeff Kaplan and the overwatch team. And then there's overwatch. They have like, I don't know. It's a very well oiled machine over there. Yeah, I mean it's Blizzard, right? Like it's yeah, they've it, been doing it for a little bit. I I noticed that like they have two main forms of communication. One is like well produced YouTube videos where it's like a very highly cut video of Jeff Kaplan talking, or it's just like a spontaneous forum post where like Jeff Jeff Kaplan comes in and just dunks on somebody. <laughs> like somebody's <laughs> complaining about something, like oh this is overpowered, or they need to fix this, and he just goes. Well, actually, and then writes five paragraphs <laughs> explaining everything that went into the decision or what changing it would do. That, I think, I mean, it's just in a different position, right? Like Overwatch is a competitive game and their tolerances are very, very tight because, you know, they focus on on top skill competitive play and you can't go making big changes there. You can't have 500 guns in, in a game like that, um, which means that, I also really like their willingness to disagree with their own community. Sure. Yeah. Like there was a, a recent uh, post uh, by Kaplan that was like, we, <laughs> it's straight up starts. We disagree that May needs a major rework, <laughs> but they also yeah. like, they don't just say like, yep, that's, we, we disagree. You're wrong. Like mm-hmm. they go into it and say like, we're trying some improvements and figuring out what we can do, but it's like, it's not a promise. It's also not giving details yet. And that's probably the best way of communicating is like trying to find that balance between no details because you don't want to set like, uh, set people up for it. Like, you know, disappointment that you didn't change something. Uh, and there was definitely some changes in Overwatch recently that they were like, they talked about it a lot. And then they didn't put it into, you know, uh, into play as quick as some of the community wanted. And there was some backlash to that. There was like, how come this didn't happen with this, like this update? Like what, what is going on? Like, we're so tired of this. And mm-hmm. that's like, if they had just held back and they, like dropped it later or talked about it later, like that would have been a little bit more to their benefit. So 
Uh, yeah. It even for a well seasoned company like Blizzard, you have them still finding, trying to find that balance, that like delicate balance of communication updates and you know putting themselves out there. Yeah. Well, I I think one thing that I appreciate that I think is common to all of these, and certainly Jeff Kaplan will talk your ear off about, is that like it's always best when they explain why. And we got we got some of that noose update that, you know, we want to bump this up, but here's what we want to do. Here's what we don't want to do. And here's why, like, here's all the things we're trying to prevent from happening. Here are the things that we don't want to change and the things we do want to boost or Jeff Kaplan talking about, like, this is why we're not going to change the meta just for the sake of changing the meta that almost more interesting when you're thinking about the lead up to it than the actual details themselves that they settle on is learning what they're going for. Cause when it does come it, I think it makes a bit more sense there. Yeah. I think, and you saw that a lot with uh, like Hamrick's discussion like three weeks ago, almost three weeks ago at this point um, where they kind of talk about the overview of what they're doing. And he's like talking about the, the points, like going through the points rather than the details and be like, Hey, we're going to touch, touch on, you know, strafe lift and catapult and make them more unique and faster. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. But like, it doesn't tell you how quite yet. Or like, Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't really nail it down quite completely. Well, we got a lot to look forward to. You want to talk about, uh, you want to talk about crimson days? Ooh, boy, do I want to. (laughs) <laughs> uh, as I suspected, that black and red shader is so fire! Oh, oh my man. god, it is it, it is good. So good. It looks even better on weapons. It does. It looks it looks great on weapons. Just like an all black weapon with some red accents on it, instead of red and white and black. Not that it looks bad, but you know, we got a lot of Cerosi shaders. Uh, it it's it's pretty cool and it's scary. It's scary. Um, no, it's a. Uh, I like I like I like the shaders. I like the like the way they look and uh i finally got the midnight coupe on pc so it looks even better on that one so. oh yeah no it looks so hot um the uh the game mode is i'll i'll be honest interesting i i did, when we were talking about it last week i didn't know what to expect like i was yeah. just like what what is this like it, i i glanced over the you know the twab and was like okay that makes sense to an extent, but they still left it a little like uh, open ended. Be like, oh, here's like, here's what might happen. Get ready for a surprise. And now we got this like really interesting doubles mode that like I am smitten, smitten about. I um I think the thing that it took for me was realizing like crimson doubles in particular is not a permanent game mode. Like no. this is not a clash replacement. This it's is not, not something, something that's going to show up there. Every, yeah, exactly. Every month. This is its own thing. And as soon as I realized like, Oh, this is mayhem. Like it's different, but it's, it's the same kind of thing. This is a, like an ability free for all. This is an abuse your exotic perk. Uh, go crazy with the grenades drop so many riffs over and over that it made sense. You know what it feels like to me, birds? It feels like uh, we're we're part of like a PTR or like a test uh-huh. for what could happen. <laughs> yes, in Destiny, like there, it feels very similar to what I would like for abilities. Like it was being close to your teammate. Obviously, it bumps up the recharge rate of your abilities. And it felt very similar to how abilities felt in Destiny 1. But the difference is that the abilities this time around are not like one-hit kills. Yes. So it felt more utility rather than frustrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of grenades, but like, so? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that, that's the thing, right? Like, you know, you saw a ton of Shinobus, and I'll talk about Shinobus, but, like, it takes both of those grenades and maybe even a bit more to get the kill, right? Like, it's not like you're just getting nailed with stickies or you're getting hit with a lightning. Like, you kind of have to get hit twice or, in my case, just 
you know, stand on it accidentally. Like someone throws a pulse grenade on your rift and you're like, man, it sure is busy. Oh, I'm dead. I shouldn't have <laughs> stood on it. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I, um, I think the the takeaway that I had from this week is that I really like Crimson Doubles in particular as like a goofy one-off change it up game mode. It is a lot of fun. I think it also proved that just doubles as a format in general in Destiny has legs and that there's... Um, See, you know, I'm, with, I'm afraid the, that like future changes will make this a little... It won't be as unique. Hmm. If, you, if, that, like, yeah. if they level out the sandbox to around this level, like... Oh, there's not God, much, I, I hope they don't. That's, I mean, like, to, not like... To, not completely, but like it loses by comparison, it loses some of its like shine, like its mm-hmm. shininess. And you're like, okay, well, now I'm I get my grenades a lot faster than I did. And if you do, if you like move it over and say like, oh, this is the new recharge rate plus what you get for being close to your your uh, your lover. Uh, <laughs> or you, your uh, very good friend your very good friend but it's like okay this is a lot but it doesn't feel much different whereas like it's just like leaps and bounds different than what we have now that's true I, I, I think if you if you took these ability rates or anything close to them and put it into fours it would be too much it would just be it would be annihilation um but I, I, I think like, I think, I think doubles does a really interesting thing because when you cut out four players, like let's say, let's say there, there, there's no recharge, there's no tracker, no anything like that. Like all you had was doubles that it changes. I think one of the big things about the current 4v4 feel, which is that it's a team shot based meta, right? Like it's a tactical shooter. You, you, Team. you know, stick teams. together. Yeah. You play with your teams, you shoot together and that's what does it. When you only have two people, that is much less pronounced for starters. And it's harder to do because you can't afford to just have everybody facing the same way. And that felt a bit better. You addressed the last week where you like, okay, well, I moved away and I got away, but I ran into two of the other players on the other team mm-hmm. and I'm still being shot by the first two players. So yep. like four people tends to be like, oh man, I'm just like moving in every direction and I'm running into people that are like team shotting me. Yep. And whereas this, there was moments in Crimson Days that I was just like, you know, making moves and like, you know, being elusive. And I knew I could go in a direction because I was like, oh, they're here. And if I want to get away, I can be tricky and I can make like good moves around the map with my map knowledge rather mm-hmm. than like, ah, oh, crap, I sp- <laughs> I'm running away. I'm running into their spawn, like where the other two people are going to end up. So. It yeah. felt good to not like get shot in the side of the head. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. And and there's you know, it it's it sucks more to die in doubles than it does in fours. Um, at least, you know, not you know, outside of competitive modes. Um, and it's easier to get away for that reason, uh, which I thought was kind of nice. What do you think about the tracker? I have mixed feelings. You know what? I, I don't mind it, especially with when you like the way you started this conversation was it's not a often thing. It's not going to come around all the time. It's literally here for a week and you're just going to like, it's fine. Like let them, let them stick together and have it be this weird mechanic, like kind of be close to each other. And if you don't, you're going to be able to see the other team. And that's like, it plays into the whole fantasy of the mode. Like you got to be, you know, you and your friend are going in there and you're going to work together. Yeah, I uh, I'm gonna be honest. It uh, it took me a minute to figure out that mechanic, right? Like <laughs> when I get the tracker on my side, it's like, oh, I'm too far away from my buddy. I'll go find my buddy. Um, I when I saw it, them above the enemy team, I was like, why am I getting this information now? I did not realize that they were <laughs> the same thing, invisible to everyone. Yeah, I okay. So I think for this week, for Valentine's Day, it 
makes sense, right? Like the fantasy is there, like it, it's a team thing. I think it had a real clear effect on the correct strategy and a lot of the loadouts that you ran into where controlling center map was really the play to make almost all of the maps, certainly in Burnout, certainly in Endless Veil. Vale. Oh, and by the way, oh my God, Burnout, right? Yeah. Dude, oh, I'm I'm in love. <laughs> Um, and like, and, and that made sense, right? Like you want to lock down the power ammo and you want to, especially if you're playing with warlocks, like you want to be able to put your rifts down and keep on using them. You, you want to have the superior angle and and have a little bit more flank proof. The recharge ability is kind of bonkers. Um, (laughs) it's kind of bonkers. Uh, but I think overall the, I mean, and like, I want to be fair, right? Like the tracker does not preclude a good flank. You can do a short flank where you're just rotating around to like the next angle and that won't be far enough to light up the tracker. Yeah, not Um, everyone that gets the tracker knows what to do with it. Yes. Um, So it's not like, oh, you can't flank because you can flank. Like I I, I was playing with Bonesy and like we had a number of solid flanks there because it's just like they're engaged, right? Like they're you know, one person is the front, the other person's moving. They're not facing towards where you're going, especially if, you know, you go invis or whatever. Uh, You're just sliding a lot, you know, you're staying off radar. But I think going forward, I would love to see just a straight doubles mode that doesn't have the tracker, doesn't have the ability recharge, um, because I think that does open the game mode up for not map position control, like it's still an option, but also for... Yeah, for like rotating mode, for splitting spawns and, and you know, like doing the, the scrims kind of approach where you're constantly moving and repositioning and pinching. I think I would like to see that. That being said, I'm having a ton of fun throwing a, like an unreasonable number <laughs> of grenades right now. It reminds me of the amount of like grenade throwing and meleeing and like, no, it... it, it. I love talking about this, but it highlights like in destiny one, I had a lot of chances to punch people Uh like across the map. You love punching people. Well, like literally just like that, this sunbreaker, like melee and punching people away from you. Just so much fun. And like, it provides just like weird moments of laughter. And like what I like about gaming, it's, it's, it highlights that for me. And in Destiny 2, you don't get a lot of it because you don't get your melee that often. And when you do, mm-hmm. it's not always the perfect scenario for that to happen. Like where where you punch someone and they like go fly. Because that like, I'm pretty certain the mechanic is they have to be in the air slightly for you to push them away. Like yep. if they're on the ground, it's not going to work. But if, even if they're like slightly off the ground, you can punch them away. And yeah, it, I, I saw a hell of a lot more of it in this game mode because yep. I had my melee all the time. Yep. Yeah, it, it was it was amusing to me like how like what loadouts just quickly were identified as the meta and like I'm not going to lie like I changed it up. I played a lot of different things. I took advantage of it, but I also had a couple of extremely try hard games. Um Bones and I <laughs> were playing uh, I was playing uh on my Arc Strider with Shinobus and the double skips and he was playing with his Arc buddies Stormcaller. And just like dropping riffs and throwing grenades constantly. And it it was silly. Like it's, I, I get it. Like it is not particularly fun to go up against that. And it's not the most fun way to win. Because you're just like, you're not having as many gunfights. You're having a lot of standoffs. And oh my God, teammates, like there will be a lot of grenade throwing at the beginning of every round. Do not be surprised by it. Do not stand there. You know that's where all the grenades are going. Let, let get them out first. But like being in that situation where it's like the start of an engagement and I'm going to throw three skip grenades within the first couple seconds of the fight because you just get your your third one back so quickly where it's like I'm throwing one before I even peek just to get people moving. I'm throwing another one at the first pe- person who peeks when I can see them and I know I've got, got it. And then... I'm going to throw one as soon as I like pulled back in the cover to get my health back. Um, it's yeah. I, what can you say? It's, it's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Pretty darn goofy. But I will say, um, I, uh, and like, I know no one is trying to hear this right now. Um, but I kind of fell in love with skip grenades this weekend just cause <laughs> I had, 
enough opportunities to use them in PvP to like start to get a feel for them. And like I watch, I mean, we've been talking about that special K dude video, his his Arc Strider video, where he was you know, doing work with him and like tried to give him a shot, but it wasn't until I was playing with Shinobu's on burnout and I just had so many that I got to do something that I haven't had a, like, okay. End of D one. Like I played almost all night stalker and I, I use spike grenades mm-hmm. and burning shrine was my favorite map. Like that would, I would go literally go into private matches and practice just like, throwing spikes at different angles. Like he's standing over here. I'm going to put on the opposite wall behind him. I can't see him. I know they're here, but I'm going to close this off by putting it on the wall and just like playing that geometry game and realizing like spikes don't really do that for me. Like they just don't hit as hard or the cone isn't as big or something. Um, But treating skips in the same way where you're throwing it at the ground in front of you to get it to bounce to make a wall or you're throwing it at the wall behind them up high so it'll bounce off and go towards them. Like playing the angles like that or kind of throwing them around corners in that way, that was um, like it clicked for me and I had a lot of fun and I think I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say goodbye to Arc Bolts for a minute. I like when uh, game modes can influence your full gameplay. Yeah. It's outside of it, so. I mean that's what mayhem's good for. Mayhem is your chance to practice, right? Practice your abilities because you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have a whole lot of them. Yeah. Well, Bert, we got a faction rally coming next week. Got something to look forward to. Uh, maybe Future Work will win this time. I don't think they will. But I, you can always dream. They got some good shaders this time around. People should play uh, Future Work all. Uh, I uh. I'm excited for this faction rally and for exactly one reason. Um, I am obsessed with the Vice Auto Rifles, but the best one, in my opinion, remains Sand Wasp. And uh, it's got it's got the high caliber rounds. It's punchy AF. Um, <laughs> it's just really good, and I like it. And I want so badly to make it into a masterwork because I get more kills with my Sand Wasp than any other gun. And I also have one copy of whatever that dawning shader that i love so much was and i've been saving it for this this dream gun um i don't like the the, the legendary ones I, i'm not crazy about valicaden or perseverance or anything i want the dead orbit one i want it and now it's in the prize pool and i will get it and I i'm gonna get work it i want the linear fusion yeah 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 the vice no. one that has like the sexy uh dead orbit yeah it's shader. a dead orbit vice gun it's pretty Yep. That's what I Vice want. for life. I got a goal. Oh, it's it's so good here in Vice land. <laughs> I love wearing my Vice shirt. It's my favorite shirt. It's a it's a snappy. It's a real snappy. Um well, like like we said at the beginning of the episode, we got some solo episodes coming out, so you're just going to you're going to have some uh time off from the three of us. Get some uh fresh faces in here outside of just us. And a little bit different content. Hopefully these episodes will be a little standalone rather than, you know, how our, you know, we, we change with the times and we kind of talk about whatever, you know, I, I appreciate people going back and listening to old episodes with old metas and old discussions, but uh, yeah, hopefully these, uh, these stand out and they kind of have something that you can go back to from time to time. I know I'm trying to make mine uh, be a reference that hopefully people will go back to uh, over mm-hmm. and over again. Well, I, I mean, you're up first, right? Um, yeah. What do you, uh, you've talked about it a little bit, but uh, what do you have planned? What am I going to be listening to next week? So I am actually going to sit down with sports psychologist Steve next, oh, tomorrow in this world. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and we're going to talk about all sorts of things and just kind of focus in on how you can improve your mindset entirely from top to bottom like where do you start where do you advance to what are the benefits of advancing past that that point uh what are some uh techniques that you can use to get to that space and kind of explore it a little bit from there kind of let it go uh just how it goes and we're also going to give you like i'm gonna try and get as much information about uh steve as possible so you can get to know him a little bit better because yeah he is more than just the lemon Steve is an interesting guy. There's a, 
Yeah, he's like unlike unlike us. Like this is his 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 real job. This is his actual full time job. He is one of the professionals when it comes to sports psychology, and I think probably more focused on what that means for video games than uh, than. Uh, yeah, it's a small club. It should be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a a couple flights next week because I'm traveling like I do, and uh, I cannot wait to sit in my cramped airplane seat with my headphones in going uh going there man give me the give me the overhaul get all up in my brain fix all those broken things (laughs) well you may have to listen to a few times and hopefully it'll fix at least (laughs) it'll take eventually (laughs) yeah uh i guess i'm up next after that um i'm not ready to talk about my episode yet i don't know (laughs) I um I'm gonna have some uncomfortably emotionally honest conversations with some people that are close to me, and uh, so if you've got a very strong cringe sensitivity to people talking about real shit, and um, yeah, not trying to, not I don't trying give away to, too much. Yeah, okay, okay, that's it. I I I'm I'm figuring it out, but like, yeah, I'm I'm tired of editing myself. I just want to be honest about some stuff. So, Ooh. and I'll make it interesting. It'll be punchy. We'll have some cool music. It'll be a good, <laughs> a good fun thing. Leave it to that. Bones will probably do something with like a song or, or something weird. Yeah, but Bones will figure something out. <laughs> it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be a real tight timeline. He'll figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll be good. You want to do some plugs? Let's what do we it. Well, it's about that time. Um, hey, go to crucibleradio.com and click that maps button because we've got relic. one and only relic on the case. Relic does not waste any time, man. He got that burnout map so quick. And yeah. um, I think he also appreciates the map building canon uh, that we're establishing on the show. So I get to tell you guys this week that the secret to Relic building these maps so quickly is that he already has the maps, guys. He already <laughs> has them. He gets early access he, he can't make a map in one day. That's crazy. No, he's had these maps for months. I don't know how he gets them. And I expect him to explain himself espionage. on Twitter. Explain <laughs> your espionage, Spy Relict. Spy Relict. <laughs> uh, go check them out. They're great. Um, what else? We got a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Crucible Radio. Uh, we We've been pretty good with our, our bonus episodes. We've got a lot of uh, good content on there. If you're looking to hear us talk about something that's not Destiny, that is just the world in general, it's a lot of movies. It ends up being a lot of like other weird parts of our lives. And a li- sometimes it's a little like a uh, glimpse into the inner workings of uh, Crucible Radio and how to make a podcast. So yep. that's cool, right? I like... Uh- I like the pop culture talk, but um, I like I love the behind the scene the scene stuff. We, <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's you guys see the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this show. Um, I also just like getting to know you guys a little bit better. Like we've had some real as talks. Uh, my favorite thing is like there's there's these uh, these like lists on the internet of like questions to talk about on a date to get to know each other better or like 10 <laughs> things you should discuss before marriage. And we've had a fair amount of fun with those. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash crucible. And yeah, we, we don't ask for, you know, for you to break the bank. If you can do- donate anything, it is much appreciated. And yeah. we'll love you forever. It, it does not go to us, by the way, it goes to engineer Andrew. It goes to Nick. It goes to the people who make the show and put it out. And, uh, yeah, we yeah. are going to continue working uh, at our day jobs. Yeah, <laughs> it, would be a, it would be lots of ramen, if not. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I could not handle the lifestyle adjustment at this point. I need um, <laughs> I need a. There's creature comforts. I'm a creature. Anyway, what can I say? Uh, I think that I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, go uh, go post on Bones' Twitter at Bones underscore CR and uh, ask him to explain why he was not here this episode. Because uh, coughing and sneezing, uh huh, sure. uh huh, classic. Yeah, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> yeah, a swain never forgets. I never forget. All right. Well, what is what is the out outro? Uh, how do we do it? Um, let's uh, let's each share one. See, that was uh, a joke. 
that was a joke of me saying like, I never forget, but then I forgot. Oh, okay. oh okay. That's good. That's good. That, that, I, you did have to, you did have to explain that one as it was happening, but now that I see it, I find it quite funny. Uh, yeah, there you go. Good note to end on. Okay. Bye. Bye. Played with the fire, but it turns out I like the cold. Messed around and burned the house down. And when you left town, nothing I could say. Well, listen, this is closing out on the month with our new favorite album, Loyals, by the band Loyals, from our very own engineer, Andrew. Go check them out. It's loyalsband.com. Find them on Spotify, on Apple Music, they're everywhere. And uh, start next week, we're going to play some new music. So if you're a musician and you would like to be on the show, we would love to play your music. Just send us an email, radio at gmail.com. Will our love last? Is that what you want from the world? Cause baby, I'd give you the world everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.